Okay, now that we've taken a look at um, how to apply a central limit theorem for a proportion, let's go ahead and apply it to a problem here. Now, suppose that Harley Davidson Motorcycle Company uh, makes up approximately 14.3% of all motorcycle sales, sales registered in the United States. I don't know if this is true or not, but let's just pretend for sake of conversation. Suppose you're planning to conduct a survey of motorcycle owners with a sample size of 500. So I know that N equals 500. Describe and justify the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Well, if we know that the Harley-Davidson motorcycle sales make up 14.3%, that's pi. So what I have is the sample, our sample proportion pi will be distributed normal with a mean that's equal to pi. 14.3. Well, I don't actually I don't want to write it like that. I don't want, don't want to write it as 14.3%. I want to write as 0.143, and the variance would be 0.143 times 1 minus 0.143 divided by n, which is 500. Now, how do I know this is reasonable? This is the assumption, and it's reasonable because 500 times 0.143 along with 500 times 1 minus 0.143 these are clearly going to be much bigger than 5. This one was 71.5 which is clearly greater than or equal to 5. Check. And this one would be everything else which is 428.5 that's clearly greater than or equal to 5. Check. So I know that this is a reasonable sort of a thing to do. So now I can start calculating probabilities regarding proportions. How likely is it that at least 20% of your sample will be Harley owners? Well, this is saying find the probability that p hat is at least 0 0.20. Well, if I draw a picture, I know that the mean is 0 0.143, 20% 0 0.2 is up here someplace. So I need this tail probability. So now I can go to TC stats and actually do it. Now, when I go to TC stats, which I'm going to do here in just a minute, I'm going to use the same um, interface that we used previously. And that interface is going to ask for a mu, and there's going to be a box here for a value. And it's going to ask for sigma, and there is a box here for a value. And it's going to ask for n, and there is a box here for a value. Now, admittedly, the way TC stats is set up, and we need to change this, and probably will down the road someplace, this is a little bit awkward. Now, I know that the mean mu, this is actually a value for pi, which in our case would be 0.143. These two are what's kind of awkward. I know that sigma squared for p hat is actually going to be 0.143 times 1 minus 0.143 divided by 500. That means sigma for p hat will be equal to square root of 0.143, 1 minus 0.143 over 500. So you need to find this in your calculator, but here's where the confusion is going to come in. So Stay with me here for a second. Algebraically, this is the same as 0.143, 1 minus 0.143 over the square root of 500. What this means is you have a couple of options, and this is where the confusion may come in. Right here, this 500 is n. So if I calculate this, and put this value, take the square root of it, and put it in here, then n would have to be 1 because it's already accounted for the 500. If I calculate just this top piece, because this now looks like sigma over root n, right? If I calculate this top piece, then I put that in here, then the sample size would be 500 because right there's the sample size. So it depends on how you go about doing it, and it's personal preference. It, it really is personal preference.
So here we are in, in TC stats, and I've entered 0.143 for the mean, that's pi, and I use uh, 0 0.3501, which was the square root of 0 0.143 times um, 1 minus 0 0.143, the square root of all that, and n equals 500, and then my upper bound is to infinity, there we go. Now if I calculate, I get a probability of 0 0.0001. So this is 0.0001. So uh, like usual, I don't always say this, but it should always be a, a given. You need an English statement. You need to wrap up what this means in an English statement. Something to the effect of the probability of observing at least 20% highly owners uh, given this distribution is only approximately 0 0.0001. Now, suppose you actually completed the survey and you did find at least 20%. So you did the survey and you found, you know, 21% were Harley owners. Would you consider this to be unusual? Well, the answer is, well, yeah, because there is, this is a probability of it happening. Well, convert this probability to something a little bit more meaningful. 0 0.0001, see there's tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. That means if I did this survey 10,000 times, only once would I expect to have a sample proportion of at least 20% as a result of random chance. Because remember it's a random sample, and when you take a random sample, you get things that happen randomly, hence the term random. So could this happen? Could the true proportion actually be this 0.143 or close to it that they believed? But could your ha sample have just been simply by random chance, got an oddball that had 20% or more? Yeah. But it could have only happened, theoretically, once in every 10,000 samples randomly taken from this um, population. So th that would make it extremely, extremely unlikely um, to have happened. But what conclusions you might be able to draw from the result if it really did happen? Suppose you really did take this sample and you really did see more than 20%. Bottom line, it should not have happened. But it did. So there's only two things that could happen, or that could have happened. Number one, you messed up, right? You took a bad sample, which is possible, but if you, if you thought you took a bad sample, if you knew you took a bad sample, then you wouldn't be doing this to begin with, right? More likely, more reasonably, the 14.3% is wrong and the true proportion is bigger um, say somewhere closer to I'm going to say p hat because all that I said here is that we found a sample that was bigger than 20%. I, I don't know uh, what the sample proportion actually would be. So let's just say the sample proportion was truly, truly 20%. Uh, hence the reason we calculated um, probability of, of finding something bigger than 20%. Then we say that the true proportion is really probably closer to 20%. That would not be my new best guess for what pi really is. That's an extremely powerful concept and we will spend several chapters discussing this very 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 idea in much more detail.